Hey everyone, it's Paul Daniels here again. Alright, today I have got this uh, Toshiba C50. It's not powering up at all, there's nothing showing up on the um, DC in, even if I use multiple power bricks or anything. So we've basically got two, su two choices here. It's either going to be a main board fault, maybe if we're lucky a DC jack fault. And if we can't find that in a hurry, we'll just go for data recovery. So, I've already got the battery out, and uh, let's see, okay, let's get started. Just going to put my magnets there. I've actually got a few other C50s that are in various states of disrepair. So they actually may be useful in this case as uh, parts donors. This is an i5 variant. I don't have any other i5 variants, but um, all the DC input stages and things like that should be similar enough if we need that. Like I said, hopefully we've just got something nice and obvious. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I could really do with an easier job today. It seems like lately I've been getting a bad run of uh, items that I don't repair or items that aren't economical to repair. Either way, neither of them are any good for business. You can't make money. And after all, this is all about making money in life. It's not a charity. Okay, all right, let's try that. Well, I think I know why the keyboard wasn't coming off. I think the main board has to come out before the keyboard will. Alrighty, we have got ourselves one dead bug, but I hardly think that's going to be the fault. Uh, there's our, our DC in over here. Well, right, first thing I'm going to do, for the reasons of data safety, is get this hard drive out. You really don't want to be leaving those things in there while you're working on the machine. It's one thing for a person to lose their computer. It's really another for them to lose their data. They will not forgive you for that. So another. I've got a few of these little ants floating around in here. All right. Let's plug the power in. See if we get any voltage. Yep, full 19. Okay, let's see where it goes. Where the fuse? 19 past the fuse. Nothing. Alright, well, looks like this one's going to be fun. Basically, it looks like I've got no turn on signal being produced anywhere um, so I'm guessing that goes off to one of the regulators that provides us with our uh, always on power and from that hopefully um, we'll get the signal then to turn on everything else what I actually should do is check for a short to ground so let's go to diode mode and unfortunately on this multimeter Excuse me, um, I've got to change leads, which is a real pain in the butt. I'm actually thinking of changing over to a Fluke 115 series or something like that. Okay, do we have a short to ground? Will you have a short to ground? Unless that's, am I misreading this? 
Holy crap. I thought that was something exploding then, but it wasn't. It was just my camera timing out alarm. Scared the bejesus out of me. Alright, we're back and I'm sorry about the long delay. I've taken the board out. I've been running over it, trying to find the fault. Um, because I'm actually trying to do this on a limited amount of time. I couldn't really stick around and do a long explained video. Needs to say, after much stuffing around, um, I noticed a little bit of um, visual oddity on a pair of caps here. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to quite show these up. Mm, basically, these two little caps here, they're just zero five, uh, zero 0805, 10 microfarad or so. And this is what they are. They form part of the battery charging circuit. So because of that, what will be happening is when the um, charger controller tries to fire up and get things running, it will detect a short circuit uh, probably on these caps which will then make it go into shutdown mode. Now if I had something like a scope or whatever I could plug it up and uh, check to see what the startup's like and you'll probably find there's about five or six cycles and um, then it'll shut it down. So just to confirm that, let's see, I scratched off a little bit of the top I noticed that uh, just off this you can hear it sounds funny so it should give us a short circuit yeah, Sam, I mean, and that's definitely a short circuit there. So what we'll do is we'll um, use the hot air, get it off, and hopefully it'll uh, power up after that. And now I've just realised I don't have my tweezers. Uh, since I'm going to be using hot air, I'm actually going to have to move this camera back up to the top so it's not actually sitting on the desk, because otherwise the vibrations cause problem. Alright, let's see if our short's gone. Yep, my short's gone. Okay, if I plug the charger in, we should uh, at least get the power good light coming up. And we do. There we go. Marvellous. So once again, it's been a case of um, just visually looking and repairing. Uh, I spent about, I'd say about a good hour and or so digging around, trying to measure voltages and things like that. And then when I just happened to look over here, I noticed that the capacitor was looking a little funny. As soon as I scratched it, I could see it was flaking off. I'm going to replace that now. According to this, it's probably yeah, it's a 10 microfarad, 0805, 25 volts. I'm sure I've got a bunch of those. Alright, I can't seem to find my uh, 
Oh wait, there five, ten microfarads, so I got a bunch of twelve those six size ones. That's not a big problem. Well, I suppose in this case it's literally a big problem. Um I'm just gonna should be able to just sit it on top. anti-emphysemia device on. Alright, let's put some uh, freshly squeezed Lewis Rossman flux on here. The guy must have amazingly strong fingers because that's really hard to squeeze. See if we've got a short stuff. I'm good. Plug it back in the charger and see if we still got success. We did. Marvelous. Alright, let's get this thing back together so I can uh, collect my money. Over the last three minutes I've been wondering where these two screws go. Uh, would it be nice if someone told me that they meant for the hard drive? I've forgotten about that. Easy how these things get forgotten. Uh, what we're going to do is before we put this back on and the hard drive in, we're going to power it up and uh, check that the charging works and everything else. First things first, make sure we actually get a screen. We get a screen. That's good. Okay, it's understandable. These things do not have built in CMOS batteries, so um, they actually run off the integrated battery. That's alright. Now, let's put the battery in. Verify uh, charges. Okay. All right, we've got an orange light now. So that's good. Let's see if this thing uh, boots. Well, I think it's fair to say this is going to work just fine. Alright, that's everything. Thanks for that, and thanks for watching.